Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode. On today's show, we're taking a look at Spawn in the Demon's Hand for the Sega Dreamcast, brought to us by Capcom and, of course, Sega back in 2000. This is actually a port of the 1999 Capcom arcade game and brings something very different to the table for the Sega Dreamcast, and we'll go into why this is a game that's definitely worth picking up for the Dreamcast. Funny thing is, I've actually wanted to do a video about this game since, well, really as far back as I can remember, ever since I started making videos a little over two years ago. The thing that's always kind of held me back from doing it is just that it's such a fast-paced game, it can be kind of hard to keep up with at times, and it's very difficult to really classify into any specific genre. The basic idea of Spawn on the Dreamcast is to put you into a bit of a wild boss rush kind of mode in an attempt to take out the boss of any given stage within the predetermined time limit, and at the same time dealing with the henchmen that the boss brings with him. And speaking of which, there are a ton of characters in this game, I believe it's over 40 if I remember correctly, that can be selected at the character select screen, so you have plenty of options and all of the characters play a little bit differently, with the exception of some that are kind of copies of the others. Each one does come with their own weapon assortment as well, and you can hit the B button on the controller to switch between those at any time during the intense combat segments. So once you select your character and your ally character, should you choose to select one of those, and we'll get into that a little bit later, You'll enter the stage and you'll immediately be attacked by some henchmen enemy that do smaller amounts of damage and act more as an annoyance or a distraction. Once you take a few of those out, usually in most cases the boss will appear. Now, the bosses do all kinds of damage and can usually take out you or your ally within just a couple of hits. The idea here is to take out the boss before the timer in the center at the top of the screen winds all the way down. If you don't do it in time, you will lose the fight and have to continue. One dynamic that makes this a bit interesting is that every time you die, you lose seconds off the clock. Luckily, to make your job a little bit easier, you will run into some items strewn about the stages while you're in the middle of fighting these bosses. These items consist of offensive power-up items, speed-ups, defense-ups, and of course, health recovery orbs as well, and these will recover your full health bar when picked up, so that's always nice. You'll also notice as well if you look right above your character's life bar, there are some notches there that will actually show you how many of each one of these items you've picked up thus far. In addition to just the recovery items, there are also other weapons that can be picked up while in the stages as well, and these are actually added to a total listing at the very end of the game. Once you finish the game, or even get a game over, you will see an item collection list that will show you one of each of the different weapons that you picked up through the course of the game. Picking up these items is absolutely essential to your success throughout the game as well. For example, when playing as Spawn, I had initially run across a second one of the machine guns that he normally uses by default, and once I picked it up, I then was granted the ability to use two of them at the same time, which effectively doubled my attack power and made the rest of the game a lot easier. Spawn does have some multiplayer options as far as the Dreamcast version goes, but honestly, in my opinion, the game is far more playable when played single player or with an AI partner that you can choose at the beginning of the boss attack mode. When you play with two players, it does split the screen vertically and it can be really, really difficult to tell what the hell is going on in a lot of these boss fights since the game is as fast paced as it is. Graphically, I think Spawn on the Dreamcast looks pretty damn awesome. The whole game moves insanely quick, and there's a lot of detail in a lot of the backgrounds and each one of the immense amount of selectable characters. It's overall just a really cool looking game, and there's a lot of variation too as far as the levels go.
Now, unfortunately, since this game is as broad in scope as it is, there are going to be some repeat occurrences, but again, that's to be expected with a game this big and this full of content. And as great as the visual presentation in Spawn on the Dreamcast is, I'd have to say I think that the sound design may be the game's highest point. It just has this feel about it where it's just really loud and big sounding. It sounds very arcade-like and it just works really well. The voices are done expertly and the music is all really fast and heavy and definitely helps to set the mood while you play through the game. So, to sum up, I think that Spawn on the Dreamcast is an awesome game and is definitely worth picking up for the system, and it does a really good job of bringing something different to the table. The only other game on the system that I can think of that's even kinda similar to this would be maybe Out Trigger if I had to pick one, but Spawn definitely has a feel to it that no other game does on the system. Keep in mind also that Spawn isn't one of the cheaper games on the Dreamcast. This one will usually run you anywhere between, let's say, $20 and $35, depending on condition. But it's still, at that price, worth picking up. It is a ton of fun to play through, and while it does take a bit of time to get used to just how fast-paced it is, it's still absolutely worth playing and picking up for the Dreamcast. As always, guys, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for watching, subscribing, and commenting. And until next time, stay classic.